I love taking my genealogy research offline and finding clues to my ancestors in the cemetery. I'm going to show you in this video step by step how to be successful in your cemetery research as well. Hey guys, if we haven't met before, I'm Lisa, a genealogy researcher, and this YouTube channel is here to help you find your ancestors, grow your family tree, and well, not get too overwhelmed in the process. So if that sounds like your cup of tea, you're in the right place. As a genealogy researcher, I spend a lot of time exploring old cemeteries. And I expect you do too, but I have to confess something. Early in my research days, I would go to the family cemetery, I would find my ancestor's grave, take a photograph, write down any of the information on that photo or on that gravestone, and then I would leave. But there's a problem with that. Doing research in this family cemetery that way will cause you to miss a lot of genealogy information, and I did. So I actually probably should entitle this video, Don't Research the Way I Did, because I did it all wrong. Now fast forward to present day, when I do family research in the family cemetery, I come away with a ton of information about my ancestors. So let's start with the first of those seven steps to get you on your way to successful cemetery research as well. Step number one, determine where your ancestor was buried. Now obviously this step is, is taken before you actually go to the cemetery to do your research, right? Because face it, finding your ancestor and where they were buried can be a challenge in itself. Sources on burial locations for your ancestors include your family, ask them, death certificates, obituaries, cemetery indices and surveys, online sites like Find a Grave, Billion Graves, CemeteryCensus.com, and local genealogical and historical societies. Their members have an excellent knowledge of the local history and the local area. So be sure and reach out to them. They can be a valuable source when trying to find some of those smaller family cemeteries that maybe are no longer being used. Step number two, study the history of the cemetery where your ancestor is buried. Now this step can be taken at home as well before you ever go to the cemetery. When you are thinking about the cemetery where your ancestor was buried, I want you to ask yourself, why is the cemetery here? Why this location? Is the cemetery where your ancestor buried a church cemetery? Well, that can provide you information on your ancestor's faith. And so you want to add those church records to your research plan. Is the cemetery where your ancestor is buried in the middle of a farmer's cornfield or an old farmland? Then you want to consider, could that have been family land at one point? Could your ancestor have been owned that land or the family owned that land? And it, so at this point, if this is where you're finding your ancestor, you want to add deed records to your research. And is the cemetery just a town or a local city cemetery? If so, then you probably want to try and seek out burial records or types of cemetery records for that particular cemetery. Typically, the first place I go is the cemetery office if they actually have one. And if they do not, then I reach out to the county or city offices to see which department has those records. Now, before we hit step number three, if you enjoy cemetery research for your ancestors as much as I do, be sure and hit that like button and let me know. Let's go on to step number three. Take a photo of any signage. Now, this is the step. This is the very first step that when I get into a cemetery to research my ancestors, this is the very first step that I do. I take a photograph of the front entrance. The front, I take a picture of the gate and I take a picture specifically of any signage that might be there at that gate. In particular, I'm checking for signage that has contact information for that cemetery office. It is possible that in the future when I am processing everything that I have found, I might have questions that I forgot, to, did not get answered or I forgot to look for. And so if I need to reach back out, I have that information already in my files. Step number four, guys, this is what we've been waiting for proceeding to our ancestor's grave. It's time to actually find our ancestor's grave site within that cemetery. You may be able to find your ancestor's grave site location before you ever actually even get to the cemetery by using a site such as findagrave.com or Billion Graves. If the cemetery has an actual office that, you, that is open, then you can actually check at the office to see if they can help you and help you narrow down the actual location. And if you're really lucky, you might be able to find a cemetery plot map or um, search function for that particular cemetery online before you ever get there. 
but more often than not, you usually just have to start looking. But here's a tip. If you know that your ancestor's date of death is fairly early and would perhaps be one of the older stones in that cemetery, then seek out those older tombstones, the section that has some of the earlier graves. And that can save you some time and some steps when it comes to finding that grave. So let me ask you, have you ever found yourself wandering around the cemetery trying to find that ancestor's grave and wondering if you'll ever find it? Well, I have. And if that's been your experience, if you've had that experience before, go ahead and type the word wander in the comments section below and let me know I am not the only one who sometimes has trouble finding that actual grave site. Step number five, let's analyze that grave site. You found it. You found your ancestor's grave site and it is time to do the genealogy happy dance. Okay, once your dance is over, it's time to get to work. The very first thing that I do is take a really good photograph of that tombstone. And I take multiple photographs up to make sure that I get just what I want to see. Note the name, note any spelling variations, any dates, and any writing that you actually see on that tombstone. Is there a family relationship mentioned? Be sure and write that down too. Make note of any symbols that you find on that tombstone. Symbols can tell us a lot about our ancestors' life. It gives us that glimpse into what was important to them. So that any symbol that you see on the tombstone is going to be an important part of your research and your, your data gathering. A good book on cemetery symbolism is a must for your genealogy toolbox. And I'll put a link in the description below of the, my favorite one that I always have in my backpack. Once you've recorded all the written information on that stone, I want you to kind of step back for a moment and just observe the stone and think about what the stone itself is telling you outside of the words that are on that tombstone. In other words, how large is that tombstone? Is there a lot of writing or a lot of engraving on that tombstone? Is it very intricate or is it fairly plain? Tombstones were not inexpensive for our ancestors. And so if there is a large tombstone and there's a lot of writing on it, or there's a photograph embedded, and yes, you can find photographs embedded onto tombstones, those were expensive. And that speaks to the socioeconomic status of your ancestor. Again, just something else for you to understand about your ancestors, because the more we understand about our ancestors, the better able we're, we are to find them in the future. Now, before you leave that gravestone, make sure that you have looked on all sides of that tombstone. You can find information sometimes written or engraved on the back of a tombstone. And you wanna make sure that you don't miss that important information. Sometimes it might be children, it might be work that they have done. It could be another ancestor on the back side of that tombstone. So make sure you go, you are going on all sides of that tombstone. Step number six, record who is buried next to your ancestor or close by. Now you may have finished analyzing the gravesite of your ancestor and that is excellent work, but you're still not done with your cemetery research and your, the rest of the work that needs to be done there. Step back and look around your ancestor's gravesite. Who is buried on either side of your ancestor? Who's buried behind them or in front of them? Do you recognize other family members that are buried close by? Make sure that you record them. And if you are finding other family members that maybe you didn't even realize were buried there, but part of your family tree, go back to step number six and analyze their gravesites as well. Now, why do I have you do that? not just to find those other ancestors, but to understand a little bit more about your particular ancestor of interest. Your ancestor was not buried in that location or in that family plot just for any old reason. If they are buried in that cemetery, that church, again, as we mentioned, it could be part of their faith. If they are buried in a specific family plot, were they there for a reason? They were part of the family or had some type of association with that family. So it's important to make sure you're understanding what's around your, your ancestor's grave and the context in which your, your ancestor's grave is located. Then broaden your, your search. Look around the cemetery itself. Do you notice common surnames that are there? Do you recognize surnames of collateral ancestral, ancestral lines? Or are you noticing surnames that maybe you've seen associated with your ancestor in 
the more traditional genealogy records. Go ahead and record those names or make note what surnames are in that particular cemetery. It could be that maybe that doesn't pertain to your current research projects, but it may come in handy. That information may be important in your future research. Now, we're up to step number seven, but don't go anywhere because there's also going to be a bonus tip after this one. So step number seven, record all the information on your family tree. Now I try to do this as soon as possible when I get back home because I don't want to lose any of those impressions that I have, any of the information that I gathered. I like to do that while I'm still thinking and in that cemetery research mode. And of course, it's the fun part, right? <laughs> Once I'm back in my office, I add the information that I have found to my family tree in my family tree software, and then I also upload any photographs that I have taken. Now, as I promised, here's your, here's your bonus tip or your bonus step number eight, and that is to edit any of the photographs that you have so that they are better, so that you are better able to read the information and that it is clear for future generations to look at. Now, as I mentioned earlier, I do use a photo editing software for this. I use VividPix Restore. It is a really simple, easy to use photo editing software that allows me to make quick adjustments to that tombstone and be able to typically read the information a little bit easier and make it so that hopefully future generations, as they piggyback off my research, will be able to read that as well. If you're thinking, Lisa, I am ready to head to the cemetery and start looking for my ancestors, I've got a free resource for you over on the website. Go to lisalisten.com forward slash cemetery research steps. And I've got a free handout for you with all seven of these steps that you can take with you and make sure that you are finding all the clues in that cemetery research for you.